again on Top Talkers. Today we're talking about the Ontario Liberal budget coming down at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Finance Minister Charles Sousa will be announcing the details of the budget. Some of those details we've learned in recent days, uh, but we're expecting the, the bulk of it all to come down this afternoon. Of course, it all hangs in the balance because it's a minority government. The Conservatives saying they are not going to support this fiscal document. The NDP, well... They seem to hold the power with this because if they support it, the Liberals continue. If they do not, we are headed to the polls in another election. Our panel today includes Connie B from Magic 100, Alison Sandor from CFRA, and Rick Gibbons also from CFRA. Right. Rick, let's start with you. Sure. This is an important day for the Liberals. It's do or die at this point. Well, there's no question. It's more than a budget. I mean, the government itself is at stake, as it always is when it brings down a budget in a minority government. That said, it will bring, back, bring down not a liberal document, but really an NDP document to some degree. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a budget uh, that uh, the NDP has drawn a line in the sand on. Uh, either submit to five demands of the NDP, or uh, we could see an election. Well, I can tell you the Premier doesn't want an election. I'm not even sure the NDP does. Uh, but the Liberals have been very upfront. Uh, they are going to uh, uh, see to all of the demands of the NDP in a bid to keep this uh, government alive. With some polls recently suggesting, Alison, that the NDP just doesn't really have the numbers and it m might not be a good idea for them to not support this and trigger an election, are they wise to, to just support this? They've got some of the things that they want. We already know of for sure. For example, the auto premiums uh, re reduction by 15%. Is it wise for them to just you know, go with this budget, stay the course and, and build a little on that momentum? Well, you take a poll or leave a poll, right? So they're fluctuating all the time. But as you mentioned, the recent polls show the PCs and the Liberals neck and neck. And the reality of the situation is the NDP does not want to force an election to see a PC minority government. That's not something they want to do. And Tim Hudak has been very clear, even before they announced when the budget would be descending, that he would not support any sort of liberal budget. And speaking with Energy Minister Bob Shirelli last week, he said, he told me that he was cautiously optimistic that this budget will pass because they literally have catered to every single one of the NDP's needs. Now, whether or not the NDP feel that they're sufficiently covered, that's what we're waiting to see. Connie, what do you think needs to be in this budget for Ontarians? What will make people still hang on to the Liberals for another couple of years, uh, you know, whether there's an election or not? What, what do they need in this budget to, to make people stay with the Liberals? I just think they need to follow through whatever they present and promise. You know, it's like, you know, it's that typical saying that they'll promise anything to stay in power and win the next election. I think they just need to follow through on it. The, the deficit, Rick, is it, is it, do you think it matters to Ontarians? I, mean, I think I know it matters that, hugely. And, and yep. maybe to answer or uh, follow uh, Connie's question, I think what we need to see, I don't think we're going to see it, by the way, mm -hmm. is a real commitment to reducing the deficit. I think this is a government that will beat its chest and say, hey, look, we came in under last year's forecast, and they will. Mm -hmm. They're going to come in somewhere around $10 billion for a deficit mm -hmm. that a year ago they projected would be $14.5 billion this year. But, and, you know, you, but, you know, these are inflated infl estimates. It's the oldest game in the world, yeah. which is under promise and over deliver. Right. But what we will not see is an aggressive move to get that deficit down further. They're content to live on hope that uh, the economy will grow us out of that deficit. I'm not sure that's the appropriate strategy. But how much work do they still need to do for our, our, mm -hmm. our economy, and Ontario in particular? I mean, we're, we're competing with China, we're competing around the world. It's not, it's not just in our own backyard anymore, business against business. How much money do they still need to be pumping into long-term <laughs> infrastructure projects, getting more jobs out there? Isn't that, shouldn't that be a key component still? It, it is a key uh, component, and Mayor Jim Watson actually was on CFRA this morning and talking about how much he hoped to see some extra infrastructure funding come in so that the city can can do some of the much needed repairs on aging water mains and streets and things like that but you have to remember there's also the gas plant issue that's surrounding this entire budget and the liberals are sort of licking their wounds over this and it's been said time and time again by by tim hudak and the pc party that this new liberal government is following the, the steps of dalton mcginty dalton mcginty obviously had to step down and uh, it, it all comes back to whether or not there's enough public support. So that's something that they're going to think about as well, especially surrounding this recent gas plant. And that happened just two days ago. We saw Kathleen Wynne testifying. Connie, is that still going to play into, you know, are we, is that bleeding over into the budget and, and still could have an impact on even what the NDP does? I think the memories are long, uh, you know, for people that are living in Ontario, so they'll, they'll remember everything going into the next election. But the real question is, does the minister get new shoes today? 
<laughs> I'm not sure that's a tradition in Ontario. No, sure is it, it is. just federal? Maybe the okay. shoe boxes. See, that's what I was looking forward to. We want to see some element of austerity today. So if he gets new boxes, <laughs> well, it would, yeah. Would uh, Rick, overall, what, would, you, would you like an election or no? Well, I think the province could use an election. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I think uh, this government has, to some degree. Um, lost its credibility mm -hmm. with a lot of scandal, mm -hmm. uh, albeit a lot of it, uh, you know, owned by the predecessor of Kathleen Wynne. But I think she she owes it to Ontarians to um, freshen the mandate. I know it's only a little over a year. It seems odd to say that. Right. But this is a government that's lost an lot, awful lot of credibility. And yeah, I, I, I think we do need <clears throat> a fresh approach. And I think Ontarians have the right uh, to to reappraise the support they've given this government, given all of the scandals. Yeah, I think it's a good point. All right, we're going to end on that. Thanks very much to our panel. we got Connie V, uh, Alison Sandor, Rick Gibbons. Uh, make sure you listen to Magic, CFRA. You get all the details on the budget. You guys are yep. doing some extensive coverage this afternoon on that. And, of course, CTV News at 6 tonight will have all that as well.